Pelsall Community Centre is unassumingly nestled in Station Road, Pelsall. Unknown to most passers-by and most people who use the community centre, this building has been plagued by paranormal activity for decades. Behind the seemingly tranquil facade of Pelsall Community Centre, this building can be at times a truly terrifying place to be. A rather large and splendid property known as the Oaklands once occupied where Pelsall Community Centre stands today in Station Road, Pelsall. The Oaklands, previously known as Victoria House, was first owned by John Starkey, who managed Pelsall Hall Colliery. Later, when known as the Oaklands, the property was owned by the Binns family, who were very well known and respected in Pelsall for many generations. Whilst publishing the Pelsall Times magazine, I was fortunate enough to meet a lady who was a direct descendant of the Binns family and who had lived at the Oaklands. Whilst telling me about her rather grand old family home, she recalled a rather unusual experience she had as a child. As a youngster, she remembered walking up the stairs, looking at the old painted portraits on the wall as she did. Then, about halfway up, a rather distinguished and smartly dressed gentleman acknowledged her, walked past her, then simply disappeared. A little shaken by this rather strange experience, the young girl was later able to identify the man as one of her ancestors. Hence it appears that the Oaklands was haunted. When I was researching for my second ghost book, I asked Mr Frank Britton, who was the chairman of Pelsall Community Centre at the time, to put up a poster for me to appeal for visitors to share their paranormal experiences with me. Shortly afterwards, I asked him if he had ever experienced any paranormal activity at the community centre, and to my surprise, he said yes. Frank then very kindly arranged for members of staff, past and present, to come into the community centre to talk to me. All those invited to the meeting had experienced some form of paranormal activity whilst working at the community centre. To say I was surprised is an understatement for so many members of staff to have witnessed some form of paranormal activity at the community centre over so many years. All of the staff members who I spoke to described having experienced a wide range of paranormal activity from feeling cold spots, being aware of unseen people active in the building, hearing disembodied voices and footsteps and seeing full body apparitions. But what bothered all of them the most was the ominously brooding and foreboding atmosphere which seems to dominate Pelsall Community Centre around September and October time. Catherine, who worked at the Community Centre for 27 years, explained that for some reason paranormal activity in the building always seemed to increase in September and October time as the atmosphere inside the building became more sinister and threatening. So much so that at this time she has in the past felt forced to leave the building. Alice, who was the secretary at the community centre in 1979 and worked there for 12 years, often experienced paranormal activity in the centre. She recalled that on one occasion when she was alone in the building and sitting in the office at about 4.30pm on a day in October, a particularly horrible and aggressive atmosphere seemed to suddenly form. She said that the whole atmosphere felt oppressive, evil and horrible, and forced her to leave the centre. Alice worked at the community centre before the hall and the Oakland's lounge were built. Her office was at the back of the main room. In her time there, Alice said how it was not unusual to hear someone's conversation when there was no one there, and to hear chairs being dragged across the floor. Alice also took me to the kitchen to show me the sliding doors by the gas and electric meter which would often open and close by themselves when no one was there. Alice said 
She would be getting on with her work in the office when she would suddenly hear a thudding noise, which was unmistakably the doors clunking as they slid open and shut. As you can see in the photograph, the doors are heavy and force is needed to move them. Alice also once heard someone walking in the corridor next to the kitchen when she was working in the office. When she went to check who had come in, there was no one there. When in company with Catherine one day at the community centre, the two ladies distinctly heard a disembodied conversation. Although they could not see anyone, they had a distinct feeling that someone was there and that they were in their space. Alice told me that when she worked at the community centre, it wasn't unusual for the lights and the toilets to start going on and off rapidly, despite the fact that there was no one in there. It was very unnerving because there was no reason at all for this to happen. Pauline was aware of something when she first started working at the community centre and it wasn't long before she too was experiencing paranormal activity. Like Alice, she also experienced a strong, angry and aggressive atmosphere whereby she felt she had to leave the centre immediately. Also, she soon became aware of two male spirits in the centre. On one occasion, whilst she was working in the main room, she noticed a middle-aged man, wearing a grey suit, walk from the right-hand side of the main room and proceed into the corridor which leads to the conference room. As she thought she was alone in the building, she hurried towards the corridor to tackle the man who must have let himself in. However, when she got there, the man was nowhere to be seen. Pauline told me that the man looked very real, solid and distinguished, and not at all like a ghost. After experiencing paranormal activity herself at the community centre, Pauline decided to delve into the history of the land where the community centre is built. She discovered that prior to the Oakland being built, there had been an old farm building and outbuilding which was divided into two parts. The farm buildings occupied the area where the stage, toilets, kitchen and conference room are today, which is where most of the paranormal activity appears to take place. Within her research, she discovered that someone had hanged themselves at the old farm, but was unable to explain why a strange atmosphere seems to consume the community centre in September and October. Anne, the current cleaner at the community centre, also experiences regular paranormal activity whilst at work. She often hears strange noises in the community centre and has also seen full body apparitions. Whilst cleaning the hall on one occasion, Anne looked up and saw a lady wearing old fashioned clothing walking in the Oakland's lounge, which is the latest addition to the building. On another occasion, whilst working in the hall, Anne was suddenly aware that someone was in there with her. When she looked up, she saw a man, who then promptly vanished. She has also experienced the October presence. On one occasion when working in the hall at that time of year, she suddenly became aware of a chair being dragged across the hall floor, and then became aware of a conversation striking up in the empty room. Terrified, she ran out of the building and frantically locked up as she left. Anne is in no doubt that Pelsall Community Centre is haunted. On one occasion, one of the mums attending the weekly mother and toddler group at Pelsall Community Centre was scared out of her wits when she went to the ladies. She suddenly came flying out of the ladies screaming that someone had just touched her on the shoulder. She was so terrified by the experience that she left immediately and never went back to the community centre. When another tribute band were performing at the community centre some time ago, one of the girls who was performing a solo on stage suddenly became aware of someone coming onto the stage from the wing. Before she could do anything about it, what turned out to be an apparition walked past her, then floated off the stage and into the audience. When the performer came off stage, she described the apparition as a man dressed in cavalier-style clothing and was most alarmed that no one else had seen him. Oliver Cromwell, 
is known to have hidden at Shellfield Mill during the Civil War in 1643. The Royalists were making their way to Rushall to capture Rushall Hall, hence seeing a ghost of a cavalier in this vicinity is probably not so bizarre. It could be said that the community centre hosts layers of paranormal activity since ghosts witnessed there appear to stretch across the ages from the 1600s to the last occupants of the Oaklands.